Toastmaster. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, guests. Toastmasters is a very powerful platform where people can speak freely and openly. There are three main rules to be followed. Um, one of them being, please avoid speaking about sex, religion, and politics. Kindly turn off your mobile phone or keep it in silent. Uh, always remain seated and uh, only move when you hear an applause. I'd like to introduce someone who's, who's always in a comfort zone, who hated moving around, uh, who's very hydrophobic and uh, didn't feel like didn't feel like moving or didn't feel like going out. But having a sudden near-death experience in her life suddenly decided she has to figure out all the problems she has and uh, have the entire thing, have the entire momentum running towards her. Fellow Toastmasters and your guests, a warm welcome. I call to order meeting number 1411. Yesterday, my father's very close childhood friend. 
and coincidentally turns out to be one of a very old member related. So he was telling me about his journey, his story. So this person did not have a very easy life. His growing days had, he and his family went through a lot of financial constraints. And one of the memories that is very well etched in his mind is that when he was staying in a rented house, the owner of that house was very calculative of the amount of water that the tenants can use. And to ensure the tenants cannot use the water in his absence or without his knowledge, he used to pass electricity to the tap. So many times when his mother used to get up very early in the morning to fetch water, unknowingly she has you know, gotten a lot of electric shock because of trying to open the tap. And seeing this, it really ate his heart. It ached. He just couldn't forget seeing the number of times his mother had to face the shock. And that is when he decided that he will change his financial status, no matter what. That was the first seed that he had sowed in his thoughts, to change his family and his financial status. He worked very hard, worked at Deccan Herald, and he worked so hard that he did get an opportunity from the World Bank at Washington as an economist with an amazing position and a pay today. And eventually he turned out to be a leading operational economist. And during his tenure working in the World Bank, he made his financial status so strong, so strong that no one can imagine. And since he created such a strong financial status, he decided to support students who wished to pursue their further studies abroad. And during that journey, when he was supporting those students, he realized that the students he was supporting were not applying anything that he that they learned during their post-graduation. And he felt very bad. They did their post-graduation in good university but could not get a good job, a good pay scale, a respectable form. And that kind of ate him. And that's when he decided it's time to give back. And he came back to India and started his own school. His school which emphasizes on integrated education where he believes that every student must become a staff. A sad is nothing but a scholar, an athlete, an artist, and a leader. I'm not sure how many of you have heard about the school. It's called the Kentley School, which is near Hebal, where they take the students from two and a half years, help them understand which area they want to pursue, and only help them concentrate on that area, providing all the possible facilities. And today, that kind of education system has been such a Traction, that the government is ready today to support him in opening many schools across India. So a seed that he sowed and tomorrow which we all would get to reap. So always anything that you want to do, always sow it with a seed of thought or the circumstances or the situation that you have faced, which now he has become a very successful person in whatever he has achieved. Similarly, we have someone amongst us who started in scratch and today heads the vivid and growing vertical in his company called Solace. He has been a past president of Bangalore Toastmasters Club, served our club in various roles, an avid leader, and every time he has come on stage, he shares such amazing stories, stories that we have all not heard. And today, again, we all get this opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Toastmaster of today's meeting, Toastmaster Vaidyanathan. Thank you, Madam President, for the lovely words. 
So my dear Toastmasters, fellow guests, a warm welcome to each and every one of you on a fabulous Friday evening. And this is Vaidya Nathan, the Toastmaster of the day, as Madam Prishnan, that's right, he said. So today I'm not going to bore you with the typical stuff that she spoke about, you know, the one that she said that I'm going to talk about some story which is going to be radically different every week. This is not something that I'm going to do because I read something about Socrates today. You know how Socrates died? He was poisoned today. Do you know why he was poisoned? Yeah, he started propagating, you know, he started talking about all the fundamental fundas of psychology, right? So he went there on preaching and he was poisoned with them. And I don't want to meet the same thing. <laughs> right? So I will refrain myself from giving any story, but trust me, this is going to be a fabulous meeting for two specific reasons. Even without me narrating a story. One, me being a postmaster in job. Yeah, modesty is not your virtue. And number two, today is the first time that we have two foreigners who are going to come on stage and dance as well take this for the very first time. One is from the superpower, US, and the other one is from the superpower, China. <laughs> so I will definitely introduce them about their nationalities when they come on stage, when they play the role. But before that, you know, when I got to hear this particular theme, I felt that I need to speak about some story which is radically different from the one which we typically hear. But then I thought and thought and figured out that there is no better story than Toastmasters in say itself. Because what you saw is what you read. There is no better way to relate Toastmasters to this particular theme. For the simple reason, a man in the year 1905 sowed the seed of Toastmasters. Because that's when the first unofficial or an informal meeting of Toastmasters first happened in the world. That's in the US. But it took close to 19 years for that seed to journey. Yeah? So typically all the dreams also take a bit of time and the same thing happened even with Ralph C. Smith. So it took close to 19 years for the seed to journey as a first meeting of Toastmasters, which happened in the year 1924. To be precise, it happened in the month of Jan October and October 22nd to be precise. But ever since, this particular tree has grown into a humongous tree with a lot of roots. The roots have spread and it has spread to close to 140 plus countries and we have more than 14,000 clubs and helping thousands and thousands of people to become better communicators. People do say that this is an excellent opportunity to become hone your leadership skills. I'm not too sure to what extent it has helped you personally, but I can tell you Honestly, from my experience, that it can help you in both ways. It can help you become a better leader. It can help you a better communicator as well. So for the simple reason that we are a part of this wonderful community, we need to take back our back and then give a round of applause to ourselves. <laughs> so when Madam President asked a few of the guests to rise up or to raise their hand who are here for the very first time, I could see quite a few. So just for the benefit of them, I am repeating what typically every Toastmasters used to repeat. That's about Toastmasters meeting per se. So in a typical Toastmasters meeting, we have three sessions. To begin with, we will have a prepared speech session in which a speaker comes prepared. They prepare, 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 practice, 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 and then they come on stage. And then they deliver a speech. And the second session is called as an impromptu speaking or a table topic session, which is a real fun session. You get to speak your heart out. Okay, your true personality gets revealed because you don't get an opportunity to think. All that you need to come is you speak off the cuff. That's a fun session, cool session, which is called as a table topic session. In which a speaker comes, he will be given a topic <coughs> off the cuff and then he has to speak on the topic for close to two minutes with the patient. And the third one is called an uh, evaluation session, an evaluation session. So it will have speech evaluations where the evaluators will evaluate the speech that's delivered by speakers and also something which is called as a master evaluation which is called as a general evaluation. So the general evaluator typically dissects the entire meeting proceedings and then he will come out with various options and suggestions in which we can improve the quality of the meeting. So today we have with us one such wonderful person, one such so who 
is going to be the general evaluator for the day. And a fabulous personality, one of the most helping person that you can ever think of. Wonderful human being, nice gentleman, and a great speaker, English speaker. Ah, he's from China. <laughs> yeah. He spent close to eight years in China working as a CFO for LNT Jiangsu Company. And then that's where he did many things which he said to me personally, which I will never be a man. <laughs> <laughs> and a chartered accountant by education, and then he has done many roles across different companies, and now he works with a company called Envan Technologies as the director. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for our company. And to assist our general evaluator, we have a three member team called as a TAC team. As a timer, we have close master Nagesh may I request you to please rise and then we go to go please. Good evening, Toastmasters and dear guests. Today, as the timer, it's my duty to time and record the presentation of the entire meeting and its individual thoughts. For today's meeting, the speeches are five to seven minutes for the first two speakers, Girish and Ramon, and for the third speaker, which is Varsha, is 10 to 12 minutes. I will hold up the green card at the end of six minutes. I will hold up the yellow card at the end of Sorry, five minutes and six minutes, and at the end of six minutes, seven minutes, I will hold it up. The same corresponds to the 12 minute speakers. At the end of the <coughs> event of the meeting, I will give my report to the general evaluator and submit to the club secretary in order to become a part of the permanent Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which helps in producing emissions. 
that's not a wash. And he aspires to be a wonderful public speaker in the days to come, but I know for sure that he's already one. And ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our first speaker, Toastmaster Grish on stage. <laughs> This is the scenario for day one 
think about months, years, and for the population that we have. Now, so I decided to stop be, by being smart, track, optimized, and planned. Now that I'm smart, I'll buy only those devices which are very energy efficient. I will track my energy consumption, me and my family, and I will try to do a carbon offset. Mean to say, of course, I cannot stop walking, I, sh I cannot start walking from tomorrow, so I will try to do a carbon offset by doing a lot of afforestation. I will optimize my energy usage in my home, in my office, wherever I go, and thereby I will try to be well within the 200 units so that I can also take the benefit of free brief from government. And finally, I will plan my work to travel to work to minimum extent possible so that I can take the best benefit of work from home. So this is my strategy for that. Now coming to the result part. The result is very simple. I am now more aware of my energy needs. And lucky for me, I am also part of my company's CSR initiatives. Wherein I spent a good amount of time. And also, Last year, 2023, was so lucky to me that I have planted almost 300 plants, thereby completely offsetting what me and my family have contributed. Now, with this, I would like to summarize my speech with this very theme clearly saying, seeds you plant today determine the harvest you reap tomorrow. With this, I end my speech by urging you all to do your part for tomorrow. I think two key takeaways. One is buy a smartwatch. <laughs> yeah, so you need to mark that one. And second takeaway, so other thing is 7.5 kgs of carbon dioxide gets emitted by every family every day. It's humongous, isn't it? I think we need to do our bit. So let us be smart in terms of usage of natural resources. A very excellent speech. Once again, I'll <laughs> Out and the other Bosch is going to come. <laughs> okay, so one of the most handsome personality in our club, Toastmaster Abai Kotari, is going to rise and lead out the project items. Good evening, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. The speaker is attempting a project where he or she has to identify his or her primary leadership style or styles and for the member to share some aspect of his or her primary leadership style or discuss leadership styles in general. Time manager, please note time is five to seven minutes. All the best to the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. It's not only a day of wash, it's a day of MTEX as well. The next person who is going to come on stage is also a MTEX. But only the branches. This gentleman is from the stream of mechanical engineering. The other one who is going to come on stage is from one of the most prestigious engineering colleges, which is Dindi Engineering College, where he did this master's in electrical and electronics and communication engineering with the Pope I pronounced it right. And he has got extensive experience across different companies across the globe. And now he works as a product manager, project manager in one of the finest electronics company. So this gentleman is going to dazzle on stage with this speech on leadership track. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Robert Kingsley on stage. <laughs> creating an impact. It's about empowering others. It's about being an inspiration. Leadership is about execution. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear Toastmasters and guests, very good evening. 
Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to my leadership journey. Thank you. There was a time when I used to be obsessed with position and titles, power and authority. The very idea of having people reporting to me was a fascination. It was more of a symbol of status and pride. It's a quality that I brought in through my DNA. I was born with it. Is there anybody here like that? I'm sure. No? Thank you. Thank you. You are my alter ego. <laughs> However, today, this quality of mine is very dormant. It lies concealed deep within my subconscious. In fact, if today somebody comes and offers me an attractive position, just like that, I don't go for it. There are several questions that come to my mind. Do I need it? Am I, are my body, mind and soul aligned to deliver on that position? Who am I doing it for? What are the priorities? What are the cultural ethos? So many questions come to me and only even if I get an affirmative S yes from within, I would go for it. Such a kind of an absolute control I have on that instinct. I play it very calculatively only when there is an unavoidable circumstance. Ladies and gentlemen, along the same lines, my leadership qualities have also evolved with time. There was a time I used to lead people with a very conventional style. As in, the, the textbook method, understand the work first, the big picture, the little details. Understand people, their expertise, their capabilities, their passion, and then delegate the work to them. I tell them what they have to do. Drive them, motivate them, constantly monitor them. I used to rule the roost. However, with time I realized that that's not the best way to do things. I was missing on schedules. My deliverable quality was questionable. There were a lot of criticisms I was inviting. People were getting choked, work was not moving. And so gradually I moved off to what is called as a very hands-off approach. Wherein I don't necessarily need people. I just remain a catalyst and enable them to function. I leverage on their leadership qualities. I just define the vision and mission statements and let people choose what they want to do. Obviously, people will choose work according to their passion, their expertise, and their skill sets. Now, what's the problem here? What will happen is, in any given setup, about 80% of the work will be taken over by just 20% of the people. This is called the 80-20 rule that exists in nature. Any organization, any setup you go, you'll find this phenomenon. If there's a lot of interesting power in it. Smart thing is not to disturb it. Let it be like that. Just ensure that your 20% of the key resources are always aligned to the vision and vision statements. What about the bulk resources? 80%? They might get a little insecure. Manage them. Gently manage them. Now what if there is a rebellion in the team against you? Hold ground. Do not panic. Resist your temptations to play to the galleries. That is the most easiest thing to do. And that is what the lesser involved people do. You just focus on execution. That's the paramount of it. That's the most important thing to do. Believe me, as soon as the results start trickling in, people will change their mind. As human beings, most of us have short-term memories. And everything will be good after that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very powerful model of execution where results are really guaranteed. But what is the problem here? That is for me as a lead. Since I do not hold an explicit role in this model, very often I may not get the credit. So here is where our belief and conviction comes into picture. As in, what if I did not get a credit? Right? My conscience knows I was behind this execution. Isn't that good enough for me? Somebody who worked for me has got a credit. Isn't that a great feeling? And not only that, in this execution, you yourself also get to participate in the work. What if somebody is not working in the team? The work, the work is choked. What will you do? The conventional approach says that root cause, it could be a skill set issue, capability issue, attitude block, emotional block, come up with remedial measures, training, counseling and whatnot. I don't do any of the damn thing. I don't recommend any of that. I simply grab the work and start doing it myself. Believe me, as soon as the work starts moving forward, 
It will be snatched back by the team. Why? Because now they know how to do it. And what about the others? The sense of invalidation. Oh my God, my work is gone. What will I do? That is very powerful. That will get people on the toes. Be it attitude block or emotional block, everything gets flushed out. There is absolutely no need to go and find out what it was. It's their personal space. You just be here and fix the problem. Sounds good? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear Toastmasters and guests, now you know a very simple but an effective method to lead people and get things done. There is absolutely no need for you to glean around any of the leadership programs in the industry. Just go ahead and try it out and do something wonderful. Whatever I have sowed within you today, you are going to reap tomorrow. All the best and thank you. Two wonderful takeaways. Never play to the gallery. Very, very important. And don't look for credit. Let others take the credit for whatever good things that you have done. So two wonderful takeaways for any leader, aspiring leader, or people who are ultimate in leadership portion. I think two wonderful speeches, one about environment, another one about leadership. And the third speaker is going to be evaluated by Toastmaster Smita Roshi. Smita Roshi. The speaker, good evening Toastmasters and guests. Good evening. The speaker is attempting a milestone speech from the Park Presentation Mastery. The purpose of the project is for the member to reflect on her growth during the completion of the entire path. To share some aspect of her growth during the completion of the path. Okay, on the time? Uh, 10 to 12. She has served in the capacity as the sales consultant with the Baidu's and then she rose through the ranks and now she is the national sales head at IMS Learning. Yeah. A phenomenal position. For a person who has just, with eight years of experience, she has become a national sales head and she attributes her success in her professional space to move masters. I have seen her career journey. And she is one of the finest speakers that this has ever produced. And trust me, she is going to make who we try to win today. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our next speaker on stage, Toastmaster Vasha. I 
resuriated myself by getting into this journey. So are we going to have a reflection part with a dramatic speech, like mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall? What is it that you're trying to reflect? Well, absolutely no. I'm just going to talk about my takeaways by attempting this wonderful part, which is presentation mastery. I have related it to a beautiful theme uh, in sync with the life cycle of a butterfly. And I thought it blended really well. So there it goes. So every butterfly starts its journey with an egg. So egg is an important object from which the life comes out. So initial levels of a path can be compared to these eggs. So what do we do with initial levels? So we, we do icebreakers where we introduce ourselves, we construct ideas, we jot down pointers, we craft ideas, we build a framework, we at least show up on stage. So that is exactly what we do with the initial levels. So as per the presentation last week, we had an icebreaker, we had evaluation and feedback. Also, we had to research on the project type, present the speech. What is the, what are the key takeaways that I had? The very first thing that I learned by doing so was to sell the same story in a different way. I just happened to call my mentor Dr. Rajdeep Manwari, ATM Dr. Rajdeep Manwari. Uh, well, the VP8 then was after my life telling me, you will have to start your second path and it was even free during COVID. So I don't Coming with sales background, you know, with that sales mentality, we thought, okay, this is the right time uh, and I should be taking my next part. <laughs> so I told Rajdeep said that I'm doing my icebreaker. Tell me what different story should I get? I think he just finished his fight with his wife. He's like, what's a mad or what? How can you write a different story? Can you change your family? No. You can't change anything about your wife. Your life is <laughs> <laughs> of 
the stakeholders. Those were the takeaways that I had from the initial levels, which were level one and two. Now coming to the second phase in a butterfly's life. So it hatches as a caterpillar. So what does a caterpillar do? It creeps, crawls, survives on the ghost plant, keeps eating, eating, eating. So it's it's very obvious that you should keep used to uh, getting constructive feedback, right? So people tell you uh, about the time, people tell you about the stage presence, they talk to you about eye contact, they talk to you about vocal varieties. You have one then point of, if you have ABC, they'll talk to you about XYZ. So you should come prepared for it and it should not affect you coming on the stage for the second time. So you evolve, right? So you start creeping and crawling and this is a phase where, you know, I learned how to persuade people. So when we have to persuade people, it is important for us to stick to a thing, not go beating around the bush and you know, it's more to do with get to the point and get supporting materials to present your viewpoint. So I can start my speech with a very pale note, I can start the same speech with a song or maybe a dialogue, like a mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall which catches your attention. So the choice is important to catch hold of attention, to bring personal stories, to you know, connect with that of the audience. So those were my three takeaways with my uh, level, uh, uh, initial levels. And then, then comes our level three. So it's, it's a very, uh, so this is like, uh, it's, it's more like a chrysalis level. So it's, it's very important for us to understand. So caterpillar is just emerging, it's creeping, crawling. So it's, it's important for us to get out of comfort zone. So now, what helps us get out of comfort zone? Maybe you need to have supporting materials. So you need to make your speech with details. It, it's very important for us to pay attention to the nuances. So that's where understanding different viewpoints come into picture. So if I have to persuade a person to do something, it has to be with a holistic approach. Now it cannot be very subjective. It cannot be very, uh, very, uh, you know, it, 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 it has to be generic. It cannot be that, you know, I am presenting it only with my viewpoint, but I want everybody to follow. I just have to bring one small example that I faced and it was horrifying, right, in, in the stadium. We had a football match and uh, there were people with messy, uh, you know, sweatshirts and there were people with uh, Cristiano jerseys and my favorite was Cristiano. I started talking more about Cristiano and the, a person had to rescue me from, you know, the, especially in Europe by, with, with more messy fans being present in the audience. A person had to rescue me from, you know, the stage to the game. So it's very important for us to understand and do the homework and present it with a holistic view. Now then comes a very interesting phase called chrysalis. Now what happens here, it starts developing inside. Now before anything comes out freely with a very colorful approach and flies all over, it is very important for the same to grow within. So that was very for managing difficult audience. These are long speeches like this. So the, the green card is already up. That means I'm in a safe zone. I'll have another few minutes and it's an indication that I need to get out soon, like I said. So it's it's very important for us to understand how to manage projects and meetings. So that will, those were my key takeaways. And coming to uh, the homeworks, it's, it's yeah, so when we, when we say that we have to talk to difficult audience, it is important for us to do some groundwork in terms of what they like, what they don't. So we are answerable to, so meeting expectations of stakeholders is very different from answering different stakeholders. Now I had specifically asked Joe Spoil sir not to add a couple of people as my value interest because I had a very short notice for this speech. Now, why is it that I think so? Because I know how the evaluations are going to be. Right? So, meeting expectations of star stakeholders is something that I, I learned while doing this particular project. So, worst come, worst 
case, if they are not able to convince, at least confuse, like what I told you. So, and then finally, after all the hangama, you know, uh, there is an egg, there comes a lava, there comes a yupa, and then finally there is a butterfly. Butterfly is flying all around. You know, it's very colorful, it's very attractive. But before it gets to that phase, it's come across different phases of struggles. That is level five. So the presentation looks very creamy, the presentation looks very rosy. The speaker is given a larger than the introduction, like in today's case. So before you get to this level, there are times when you probably would have had just one line introduction. So my key takeaway was, you know, it's, it's I understood that it's important that we have a better network in the audience so that we feel comfortable. Also, feedback is a must, irrespective of how tough the stakeholder is. That is when you come out as a very, very strong stakeholder and learning their rights. So if you ask me uh, if the theme worked, right? if, if I come out as a very colorful butterfly or not, it's up to the audience because more on the door, uh, days where Mirror told only one percent of people talk with a larger approach to social media and multiple platforms, uh, especially public speaking is more to do with the audience. So in that case, audience, audience, audience in the hall, did, have I emerged as a good speaker? Yes. I yes. Thank you. Bear with me, and uh, for those of you who are on the list, 
this until I give you your best shot. So, <laughs> um, so as we heard, this is a session from Comptu speaking. Um, and so uh, folks will have either a, uh, about a minute, a minute and 15, the green card is going to go up at one minute, and the red card is going to go at, up at a minute and 15 seconds uh, to respond to a prompt that I will give you now. I was speaking with Toastmaster Gaga Gangadar uh, last week, and he said Toastmasters is such a great way to practice. So when I got asked to do this session, I thought, what's a good thing to practice for? And I always immediately thought of interviews. Uh, <laughs> And when I did uh, my first interview, it was the second or third, uh, for a job in the US Congress, I had just interviewed with a congressman from Montana. And I had, my next interview I was interviewing with a congressman, a woman from Minnesota. And I asked her staffer, is the congresswoman from Montana, she live in Montana too? And the interview paused a second and said, you know the congressman from Minnesota, right? <laughs> they take this very seriously. Uh, and so, I learned that in some, you know, in some cases in interviews we're going to make mistakes, so it's good to practice. Um, so now for the table talk session. Now, in interviews you generally want to say why you're great for the job. However, we're going to do something a little different in this session. And what I want to hear is the wrong answer for why you would be great at the job. So a couple examples, and then we're going to give a demo from Joe Paul. Um, so the topic was fire. You may answer seriously. You might say, I'm terrified of fire. I don't like tall buildings. Or you could also start unseriously and say how much you're a pyromaniac and how much you love burning paper for a building. Um, if the topic was a barber, you might say seriously that my hands quiver and that you know, I, I don't, I'm very clumsy and I might cut someone. Or you could start unseriously and say, uh, you know, my favorite movie is Batman. I just love how the Joker cuts people. Um, so, uh, and it, uh, that's transferable to my skills as a professor. So, uh, lots of ways you could take this, but let me start with uh, calling up Postmaster Joe Paul to do a little bit of demo. <laughs> Joe, your topic is going to tell you to tell us why you would make a great fighter pilot. You have about the moment. <laughs> Mr. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, and dear guests. Fighter pilot? Oh, I really well qualified for the job. Because fighting is something not new to me. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as flying is concerned, uh, I had a, a friend who's a, a fighter pilot with the Indian Air Force, and uh, I was driving along and he said, if you can drive and navigate through this traffic, bangalore traffic, you can do it up there. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, brilliant. So that's another qualification. And another one is, uh, I have a fear of heights, but that is beyond 100 feet. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, so I'm safe, uh, you know, at the safe zone, I can fly very well. And uh, eyesight, oh, brilliant, nothing to say. I can see very clearly up to 50 feet. After that, I need glasses. I mean, but I think that's <laughs> I've done my share of, uh, you know, roller coaster ride, Giga Land, a few times on a giant wheel. Uh, but I think you have a wash basin or something in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> But otherwise, okay, I think I qualify for this job very well, and I hope I'm selected for this job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to kick it off. Uh, really excited for this session. Uh, so the first topic is going to be, tell me why you would make a great chef at an award-winning restaurant. We're going to have Toastmaster Allen. I think I make a great chef because I like to eat and sometimes what happens is you know the food has to get over right so sometimes if the food doesn't leave the kitchen itself I think it's a great start in the first place, <laughs> right? Um, the other aspect is being a chef, I it, it also gives me a lot of time. Um, I, I love as a person to experiment, right? And um, I mean, yeah, I know it will be experimenting with others, but I just like to experiment and show what I can do 
and maybe they'll show different symptoms after I serve them meals. But I think it will be great because Toastmasters, if anything, it has taught all of us it's about trying new things. So I definitely will try different paths. That will be a different pathway. But I will definitely try different paths that I can explore in different cuisines. And we can definitely see how it goes. Um, the other reason why I think I would make a good chef is Actually, I can't lie, I just <laughs> like eating more than <laughs> making food and that's both. Thank you. I have a pretty weak stomach, so I will not be eating at Alton restaurant. <laughs> the next topic is uh, to be a great zookeeper. Um, and for this, we have Toastmaster Dining. Give them all the holidays. Let them enjoy. If you give them 
what they want, then they'll be disciplined for you. They'll listen to you. That's how you become a good drill sergeant. Professor Jordan, that's why I will be a good drill, drill sergeant. I'll give the cadets exactly what they want. I won't shout at them. I won't make them do the jobs. Okay, the tank is going to die. The engine is dead. Let it die. The country is rich. We'll buy another tank. <laughs> so what is that in life? The opponents are coming really fiercely against us. Then it's fine. Let's, let's leave the ports. What is there? Two kilometers line. Let them take. Our country has a lot of land. That's what you should teach the cadets. That's how you become a good drill sergeant. Not by shouting at them. Not by your instilling discipline. Not by making them unstoppable. So Toastmaster Jordan, that's exactly why I'm the right person for the job. Please don't reject me. I will be the best for the job. I will protect your empire. I give it to them in the hands of the next empire because you know, they'll pay me. <laughs>
will be great as a mountaineer in the Himalayas. You see, there are rolling hills, there are uh, good uh, pathways with a lot of rolling stones, and you need to run on them. So that's one of the good things about the Himalayas. It's very easy to roll on the stones and then fall badly. And I am very fit to do that job. Another thing what I can do is I can take a lot of people to the Himalayas. And this is going to be fun because more the merrier. You jam up a route so that no people can go ahead, nobody can come down, and that's good for mountaineering. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, we can have a lot of campsites strewing around a lot of uh, waste around so that more mountaineers can come and put on more of their stuff and we can have great mountaineers. Thank you. I'll be sure to book Ajay next time I go to the, the Himalayas. Uh, all right, our next topic is we're looking for a warehouse logistics manager. For that, we have so many. <laughs>
with the hearts they love, not by making them strict and strong. We will make them more flexible and we make them strong. So this is what we do while in teaching. We teach the hearts, not the lessons. We teach them the thoughts. We teach them what to do, what not to do, rather than doing this is what we are supposed to do. As not being by strict, by making them more flexible and more lovable. And this is what a teacher typically requires than any others. Over to you. That's great. And I should have announced that it was your first time. Very well done. Thank you. And for another inaugural Table Topics uh, speech, Prakash is going to tell us why uh, he is going to be a great uh, surgeon. <laughs> good evening, uh, fellow Toastmasters. Yes. Good evening. So I have to apply for being a surgeon, <laughs> and uh, I am sick. <laughs> so I feel I am the best person to apply to be a surgeon. And uh, in the last uh, ten days. I have not been caring a lot about myself and I have just I have been dragging my uh, uh, illness, not taking painkillers or not worrying about when to sleep and what not to do. So I feel I can definitely cure others. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so coming to the skills, the hand skills, of a surgeon, I feel I will definitely allow them to uh, roam around just after the surgery so that they can feel worse because they will have that urgency that, okay, they are doing good, but after few days they will understand, okay, that was the worst decision I do. <laughs> so I feel definitely I will be a great surgeon. Thank you. I 
I'm coming in bike and I'm getting very hungry. I'll stop, I'll stop at a point. I'll see if I check what is there. If anything vegetarian, I'll pass. <laughs> if, I'll see, if I'll see a biryani or something, everything clean, we'll see the box will be full empty, I'll go back to that place, have to we'll buy it, get it again, and then we'll go and get it very clean. So if that if I reach late in time, do not blame me, it's the food. Over to you. Fresh. That is when I told that this 15 was not uh, uh, 
uh, was not base 10, but was uh, actually base 20. So if you understand, so when it's base 20, 15 is actually 50. So that uh, really works. So as an accountant, I can really do 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 at many point of time, but that's what we need in life. And so I think I'm the best uh, I have for my job. Two plus two equals five sounds like my type of accountant. <laughs> uh, so our next uh, topic, we're looking for a long haul truck driver who can stay up very late at night. And for that, we're going to call it Postmaster Colophon. <laughs>
remember anything off the top of my head. I have to stare at my phone the whole time. Uh, I, uh, oh. uh, no, I, I clearly can't pronounce anyone's names here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I generally like to see people fail. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> So today we hunt in pairs, isn't it? So we have three antics, and then we had a couple of uh, charter life antics, and then we have two non Indians. <laughs> one is Sandman, and the other one is Enerman, because he works for Enerman <laughs> Technologies. So please put your hands together to welcome Mr. Nitin R. General Evaluate. <laughs> Very well done, uh, 
Toastmaster Priyanka. Big kudos to <laughs> Then we had our Indian Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to call him as because he has called me as a China. <laughs> so, well, uh, Toastmaster, by then when he comes, the whole stage is his. He has the stage presence. He has the voice. He has the uh, ability to uh, give a stories. This time I missed the story because probably he was looking at that, but some story from you would have helped us to get that you know, enthusiasm. And another thing I noticed, you were standing on one side. I have seen many times you moving around, talking about, maybe you are trying to experiment on yourself, uh, but I would like to see that part of you where you keep moving and talking to people and all that. But otherwise, your stage presence, your mastery of words, and your humor took us by, you know, blew us away. Thank you, Toastmaster. <laughs> okay, we had the first speaker, uh, Toastmaster Girish. He was talking about environment and pollution and effect on, on the global uh, warming. And he is being uh, evaluated by Toastmaster Vishwanath. I request Vishwanath to come over from the <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kalimaliyasa. Good evening to the Toastmasters and uh, dear guests and especially to our project speaker, Toastmaster Girish. I think to end that four hour speech was completely a motivational and inspirational speech. This is something, a topic which we all would like to know, think about it and see what best we can do to overcome this challenge. What are the things which you did really well? I felt especially to start with the talk, the title itself. It's time to do our part. So you made it some kind of thinking on our, our end, including the evaluator, to see what could be the each in terms of the personal things also you will bring it. Second is the content. I mean, you talked about so many stats, specifically those master Girish has talked about the stats with respect to, he started with a good opening, wherein he mentioned that by the year 2020, you know it becomes, it's so much warm and hot, right? And wherein he said 740,000 so people who are dying with extreme cold and hot conditions. And stats like with respect to the economy as well, which you mentioned 4.5% of the GDP will go down in case we are not able to take over the global warming part. Could be the condition, extreme condition where the labor will not be able to work in that, at that time. So I would say the content was the king in terms of the second part. I would like to highlight what really went well, specifically the body language, wherein you were at the middle of the stage and uh, you were talking about, with respect to the content, you had a very good eye contact and a gesture with respect to the things. Where I would felt you could have done more with respect to the usage of the stage could have been an improvement. Now, with respect to personal story you have to bring in, and then you bring in certain important aspects where Toastmaster Girish brought in how he can reduce the global warming part of it, which could be from his own thing where he gave suggested, specifically the usage of vehicle, where how much actually the carbon dioxide CO2 per day from his family side is being used, and how we can avoid that, probably doing work from home, which he suggested. And especially the second point, which wherein he mentioned in terms of the plant sampling. Now, one of the opportunity where I feel I felt specifically when you mentioned on the conclusion part, you could have opened up some specific area of improvement from the audience itself. I felt like it was more of a one-way information, so I did see that the audience were able to gauge the stats and is it something 
that could be an opportunity maybe in the upcoming how you can engage the audience by connecting and ask for seeking for information. Overall, it was a very good speech and uh, many congratulations on your speech and uh, all the very best for your speech.
we had union people, you know, working with me, and I was certainly put a charge of that. And they didn't like me, a youngster coming and becoming a boss. They never liked me. I had one guy, unit leader, he openly told in the department, you are a nonsense guy, you are a fool. You know, it was such a big shock to me, a youngster joining the corporate. And I didn't know. Those days, we didn't have internet. We had a post which will come to your tray. Everybody has an entry and out tray. It will come to the entry, sort it out, put in the other guy's entry. I didn't know what to do. It was a question of leadership. Somebody was questioning my leadership. So what I did, just like Robert Cody mentioned, this guy, I didn't pass on the paper. I took all the papers to myself, started learning the job. One week he was without job. He was waiting. There's no work coming to him. And then he was so frustrated, he went to his boss. I had not complained to the boss. Then he found out it had not been triggered. Then he came to terms. Till today, we are good friends after 30, 40 years. He still remembers that uh, you know, incident. So that is a good point. What uh, a lot of takeaway from there. The next speech was by Toastmaster Varsha. Where are you? Toastmaster Varsha was the most presentation. And I request Toastmaster Smita to come over and give your invitation. <laughs> once again those masters and guests and Russia in particular that is at the end of a very long journey and your story of completing the path comparing yourself to an evolving butterfly was very engaging appealing to the eyes with the beautiful slides and the meeting I want to evaluate your speech comparing Bamboo shoot when planted takes five years to see grow its roots, spreading across in the ground like you did your first few lessons. What I particularly liked about your speech was the way you presented it, the content. You took level by level and what were your takeaways in each and every level. That was very well done with the help of this guy. So audience could definitely understand, relate to it. It was a great reflection of your entire path, the entire journey. And at the end, you, what I like that, how you ended it, you made the audience respond to you positively. That was a very well done. For a speaker, I believe the vocal variety, body language and face power factor. Yes, it was done, but at, at, at some point it was able. Perhaps a little bit more of practice would have just taken your speech to a higher level. And to challenge yourself, Varsha, I suggest <coughs> to articulate your personal stories a little more. What happens is the audience, it keeps the audience on their toes. The audience remember your takeaways and use it. Or they take it off for their own use it in their Toastmasters learning. So that is something you can take up later, challenge yourself. To summarize, a bamboo shoot springs up 90 feet high in just six weeks. But it has spent five years spreading its. And you right now are standing tall. A speaker spreading your roots in Toastmasters since 2019. It's all worth it. A big, big, big congratulations. Thank you, Smita. And Toastmaster Varsha, you're standing tall and in one corner. <laughs> That's a very good uh, takeaway because otherwise, that will, you would have blocked the light. You know, so that was very well done. I think we all need to learn from that. And probably you would have gone down on the, from the podium and walked around. Uh, but there are two things which distracted me. You need to look at it. One is uh, you talked when 
the you know time uh, timer was showing the card. You switch from the you're talking to the card and say showing me the card now to finish in two minutes and all that. That was a distraction. You you need to stick to the topic. At the second time you talked about evaluators, you spoke to Joe's and said these are the evaluators I don't want. That was not required in the speech. And uh, so let's try to avoid those distractions and stick to the topic and finish the speech. And when you finish the speech, this, uh, uh, the lights were on, you have finished. Probably we can coordinate with the laptop person and the silent arms who switch on the light and this is off and then you can conclude with whatever we need to say, whenever we use a laptop for a presentation. And next, but good, good uh, job done, Novasha. Give her a big round of applause. Masters and guests, mm -hmm. I am back with the long awaited Grammarian report. <laughs> Our word of the day is gleaning, encouraging all of us to obtain insights from the various sources and gather wisdom in this metaphorical verbal harvest. Through the meeting, I observed the commendable usage of the word of the day as well as the theme in the speeches. Exceptional usage was prevalent throughout the, the meeting. Uh, let's look at the exceptional usage. The words, word of the day was used once by Robert Kingsley. Uh, the first speaker used catas catastrophe, STAR, which is an acronym, glacial masses, carbon offset. Second speaker used badge of honor, cultural ethos, ruling the roost, catalyst, source of invalidation and rebellion. The third speaker, curiosity killed the cat, but more information brought it back to life, rejuvenated the complex chrysalis models. The Rotators <coughs> President TMOD TKM also used exceptional words such as pertinent, in line, etched in mind, bamboo shoot analogy, humongous, and dazzle. Table topics also used a variety of uh, exceptional grammar usages such as best in the game and first principles. So the not so exceptional usages, which uh, people need to improve on, is keeping colloquialism to a minimum and implementing intelligent usages of the English grammar articles. Thank you.
careful before calling him. I thought, let me use the word. Uh, uh, but it's nice that uh, people have used those words. And one more point I remember, uh, forgot was uh, the practice of calling the secretary to read out the minutes. He did a very good job for that, uh, very humorous at the same time, taking out the main point and talking about uh, what happened last week. Uh, I think kudos to the secretary. Uh, well done.
Remedi and Toastmaster are the Master Robert and Toastmaster Girish. Mm -hmm. 